Hey there, it's Kat and this is Spruce and Reviews. It's the first day of the Because We Can Readathon and I am so excited to finally start showing you guys these video challenges. I've been working on them really hard and I just really can't wait to show you guys what I've been doing. So uh, without further ado, let's get on to today's video challenge because that's why you're all here. So today's video challenge is a story time and it's basically to tell everyone about the first time you did something bookish. So before I start talking I'm gonna put my mug down because I'm sure if you watch my videos regularly you'll know that when I talk a lot I flail my hands around like a mad woman and like the coffee sort of spills so I'm gonna put it down so that I, I don't do that. So the story I want to tell you guys is about when I went to go and see Lee Bardugo in Liverpool. So the reason I want to tell you guys this story is because I don't do that many bookish things. I don't tend to do that many things in general. So going out to see something, like see an author who is going to talk about their book, it's like a massive thing for me because I have a lot of anxiety in my head. There's, there's a lot going on in there. There are a lot of different factors that would stop me from going to go and do something like this. And the fact that I actually did go and do something like this, I kind of just, you know, want to share that with you in case like anyone else is sort of anxious about doing this sort of thing. like. I always saw people doing this sort of thing and going to see authors and being like, wow, that's so cool. Everyone's really brave to just go and just go there and like talk to people like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, so it's kind of weird the way this sort of started out. So I was sat on my mid morning break with my friends and we were just sort of like chatting, had a coffee. I was just scrolling through my phone and I happened to see on Instagram because I follow Lee Bardugo that she had posted about touring. And I was like, oh, Lee Bardugo's touring. Now, one of my friends at work loves the Six of Crows duology. So I showed her and I was like, oh, Simone, look, this is happening. And she was like, oh my God, we should go. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. So I filed it in the back of my head. And I happened to mention it to my other friend, Adam, who likes a lot of book things, but didn't really know who Lee Bardugo was or anything like that. So we kind of talked about it and we were like, yeah, we should go. Simone talked to her boyfriend James and he was going to come as well. Um, like all four of us just went, yeah, let's go. So in my head, I'm there thinking, oh my God, I'm actually going to go to something like this. What's happening? What's happening? So I booked tickets and we all managed to book the day off of work. We were a little bit unsure at one point in time because we were all in the same department and having four people off like is a little bit iffy so anyway we managed to get the day off um we were all pretty pumped for that and uh yeah so this is this is kind of how my day went so i freaked out in the morning because as you know anxiety does weird stuff to you so we all met at work in the car park so me and adam could abandon our cars there and we went in james's car and then we just sort of drove to Liverpool. We stopped at a service station along the way, had coffee and biscuits because coffee and biscuits are always good. So when we got to Liverpool we had to park and we'd found this car park right and it's like a city centre car park and in the UK we drive on the left but the car park is like in the middle of the road but you go down into the road and like it's the most unnatural thing you've ever done in your life because you're just driving on this dual carriageway road and then you're like, oh no, must veer off down here to the right and go down. It's like you're trying to, I don't know, it feels like you're trying to drive into oncoming traffic or you've just fallen down a hole. It's so weird. That car park is the oddest thing. So we didn't really have a plan for the sort of beginning of the day other than just let's walk around. We went into Forbidden Planet, we went into bookshops, we went into a giant Waterstones which had like an escalator in it and I was like what? Why is there an escalator in this bookshop? I love, I love it but like why? And that is where I picked up two copies of Shadow and Bone. Now the reason that I picked this up is that I noticed on like the email ticket that we'd been given it said that Lee would sign two books and I was like oh okay well this is good times then because what I really wanted to do was get a copy of Shadow and Bone that I could send to Faye for a mystery date with a book which I did because it was the first ever buddy read that either of us did and I was like I'm meeting Lee Bardugo how could I not so I did so I bought the book and I was like okay so I can get her to sign Ninth House and Shadow and Bone so that I have a copy of Shadow and Bone that is signed and I can get my friend Adam, who only really wanted Ninth House, to take the other copy of Shadow and Bone and get that one signed. So I thought this was kind of an ingenious plan and I was very happy with myself and I was like, yes, this is this is a good, this is proceeding well. So then we wandered around a little bit more and it got a bit cold. It was near Christmas time and we ended up looking in John Lewis at like loads of different Christmas ornaments because John Lewis is full of Christmas ornaments. So many Christmas ornaments. I ended up eating at Wagamama's, which is an experience because 
you have like these long tables and you end up sort of sitting next to people. It's like um, dining hall style, and, like for anxious people that's not the best thing ever. I, I don't love that but, but the food was good so you know it worked out really well. And then we pretty much had to walk to our destination. So then we were queuing outside of this uh, little cafe thing that was being used as the venue for the event. I can't remember what it was called but it's like across the road from the Liver Bird building and um, yeah it was freezing cold. It was so cold. We were out there for a good 20 minutes freezing. Now the interesting thing about the queue is that I mean you could definitely tell that like they were book people because you could just you know when you just look at people and you're like these are book people I can tell and also I could hear some of them talking about books and there was a person that was standing like a couple feet behind me and I could hear them and they were saying things like oh if I was in the Grisha verse I would be this kind of Grisha and like blah 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 and I'm like yeah we're definitely in the right place because my little anxious brain was like oh my god what if we've gone to the wrong place? What if we've gone to the wrong place? What if I've taken everyone to the wrong place and we're not going to make it to the event and then we don't arrive at the event and then it's all my fault and everyone's sad. But that wasn't what happened. So we queued up and we went in and they gave us a copy of Ninth House in this cool little tote bag which I've stored away somewhere so I don't ruin it because that tends to be what happens with anything that I touch. And then we sort of filed into the room and there was a bunch of seats set out in a sort of semicircular arrangement and there was like a podium with two chairs on it and I was like oh okay this is interesting it looked nice we actually sat at the back row um by like sort of by one of the exits to it because uh, my friend Simone's kind of claustrophobic so we didn't want to sit like near the front or anything personally I didn't want to sit near the front because like I don't want anyone to notice me ever so I'm like I'll just sit back here this is fine this is a good place to sit where no one will even see me so that was nice and yeah we waited around for a little bit then everyone sort of took their seats and Katie Lowe comes out and that's the author of the Furies in case you didn't know because I didn't know because I didn't really know how these sort of events worked and I didn't know you had like a moderator who like I'd vaguely heard something about a moderator but I wasn't really sure what that was and I wasn't really sure that it was going to be like another author and it was another author okay so this actually set off like little alarm bells in my head because I was like stupid you really wanted to read that book you didn't know this author was here you don't actually know who this author is now you look like a twat yeah so this is like the internal conflict that's going on in my head and then I'm like no okay just just let's just focus on focus on this <laughs> let's focus on Lee Barduku who came out next she was very lovely it was really interesting to hear her speak and it was really interesting to hear her talk about just how she sort of came to Ninth House and how she writes and all that sort of thing so that was great. She is a fantastic person. She's really cool. I really love listening to her. And yeah, that was really great. And then, <laughs> then they opened the floor to questions. So little old me has no questions to ask because again, do not notice me. I will sit here and avoid all of your eye contact in for the entire room because no. So um, I was listening to other people's questions and it was all great. And then do you remember when I said that there was a person in the line who was talking about which Grisha they might be if they were in the Grishaverse? Well, I distinctly recalled that voice because it came up again in the question time. Except this person proceeded to ask, How did you feel about killing blah blah blah? And she, she said the name. She said the name of the person and I haven't read that book yet and now I was like ah oh. like my literal reaction I slumped in my chair because I was like oh fuck because I was trying to read Crooked Kingdom before I, I went to this event and I just didn't I didn't manage to do it and now I know that somebody dies but I will say credit to Lee because she did try and cut the person off before they finished the word like it was like I'm gonna replace the person's name with the word dolphin um, because that doesn't sound like anyone's name so it was like how did you feel when you killed Dos? no spoilers that was how it came out and it was like well yes yes no spoilers thank you even though you've just ruined a book for me thank you very much that was like my least favorite bit of the night I could have done without that I feel like people should know going into that sort of event that maybe no spoilers just in case because you don't know who has or hasn't read anything 
that you might have read, especially when you're going to see an author who has done multiple series and people may only have like read one of those series and gone into there going, oh, I'm really excited for another thing, you know? You don't know what people have and haven't read, so maybe don't spoil them. So then when question time was over, Lee moved over to like the signing table and the way that it worked where we were is that they took you row by row so that you would um, go to the signing table and then you would leave. So it sort of emptied the place out. Now we were on the back row, so even though that wasn't good for, you know, seeing everything, it was good for, you know, don't see me and leaving and getting one of the first signed books because I think we were like the second row to get it because there was a row on our right that went first and then we went after. Now, <laughs> the way that that worked is you open up the books to the, I think it was like the title page and the people who work in the shop come through and they would put out a post-it note on the pages that needed to be signed and they would write down your name on whichever one you wanted personalised. So you end up with like these post-it notes in these books or book if you've only got the one that you got for the event. So, um, <laughs> So I'm standing in the queue and like this is when I start to feel like honestly I, I said to my friends I was like I'm the most nervous like I get so so nervous that I stop functioning um so this is where like my anxiety gets so bad and like it is other things like I just generally how my brain works is when something important is happening it's like oh my god freak out so <laughs> that's kind of what happened so I'm I'm standing there in the queue and I am almost at the point where if I don't calm down a little bit then I might pass out because like <laughs> Right, imagine like a four-year-old on Christmas that can't sleep because they're so excited but like they're also nervous of like everything. So it's like excitable nervousness and it's just the worst thing. But like it's great but it kind of sucks too. It's exhausting. So I'm standing in the queue and I'm like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what do I say, what do I say, what do I say? Because I'm going to torture her and she's going to be there and like oh, so anyway, I finally got there. They said to us before we all got up, oh yeah, when, when we're there, we can take your phone and take a picture while you're getting your book signed. So you have like your nice sort of Instagram worthy pictures. And um, so that was quite good. So I handed over my phone. And um, basically, oh, I just, I think I made a fool out of myself because I always, I don't know, I don't know. It just sort of came out of my mouth. But I was like, oh, this book helped really help me get out of a reading slump because it was the sort of thing that sort of kick-started me going back into YA and sort of really reading a lot after like that whole three-year reading slump that I did. It was one of the first books that I read being on booktube that made me think, oh my god, I, I love this. So I, I kind of just said to her, like, oh my god, this book really helped me get over like a really long reading slump. And then she was like, oh, thanks, that's really nice to hear. And I was like, <laughs> okay, bye. And then afterwards I was like, oh, I need to die now. For real though, I, I, we went outside and I was really glad it was cold because I, had, I got myself so worked up and I got so nervous that like I was sweating, which is the most attractive thing I could have said to you guys, I'm sure. Um, but <laughs> But it's one of those weird things, when you get like really nervous and really anxious about stuff, it is weird. But anyway, that was the event. So we trundled off back to the car park and it wasn't even that late. So we were like, okay, well, we've got an hour's drive home anyway. So we got back in the car and we ended up stopping in the service station. And I think the guys got Burger King, but I didn't get Burger King because I was like, I'm not eating more food. I've eaten so much food, plus I'm a vegetarian and it takes fast food chains like 10 million years to make anything for anyone so I think I just had a hot chocolate from Costa so it was nice and then we went home and my car had frozen because it was really cold so I had to scrape my car at like 11 o'clock at night on the work car park not at all looking very strange and uh, then I went home so that was my experience meeting Lee Bardugo going to an event to hear her talk and honestly I loved it because it was awesome even though I am slightly a crazy person but you know that, that is life. That is life. So, I mean, if you're an anxious person, there's a play-by-play -play of the day that I had and um, it'll be okay. They pretty much guide you into what to do. You don't have to sit there and think, what am I going to do next? Apart from, you know, the bit when you actually meet the person to get the book signed because you're on your own there. Don't do what I did. So, mm. anyway, I'm going to leave it there because I've definitely rambled on for way too long. If you're interested in seeing tomorrow's Because We Can Readathon video challenge, then 
come check me out tomorrow. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!